Hi, I'm Ted Pickens from BiteWiser.com and today I'm going to try to show you how to make a logo in Inkscape and I am using Inkscape version 0.48.2 so I'm going to go to File and Document Properties so I can uh, so I can adjust the size of uh, the drawing that I'm going to make I'm going to change that to uh, 640 by 330 I'm going to check the box next to border on top of drawing so that I can see where my boundaries are when I'm doing stuff and uh, I'm gonna uncheck show border shadow I just don't like it so I can X out of there I'm gonna zoom in set my zoom to 100 percent and scroll down so I can center this now I think the first thing that we can do here is uh, click on the circle icon and press control shift and then click left click and draw your circle and uh, something like this ought to be alright now if you go to path and do an object to path that'll allow you to do uh, things such as unions and differences and other things like that with that circle now I want to change the color on here to a a red color and I want to use a radial gradient for that so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change excuse me I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna change it from black I'm gonna make the inner color more like a, a purple or something like that a light purple and I'm gonna make the outer color a, a little bit of a reddish color I'm gonna turn up the alpha value here so that it's well yeah, I want that to actually be red. Okay, and uh, turn up the alpha value so that it's opaque. I'm going to use this Edit Pass by Nodes tool, and I'm going to do that so I can move where that radial gradient center point is located. And uh, if I hit the Control button and click on these uh, endpoints here, I can adjust just how far I want that um, pinkish purplish color to spread here. And I'm just doing that just to give it a little bit of a, uh, I guess, a shinier color or something like that, just so it's not so boring and just one color. Um, next thing I want to do here is I want to align this to a grid, so I'm going to turn on the grid here by going to View Grid. And uh, I'm just going to take my circle here, and it's going to auto-lock onto one of those intersecting grid lines. And uh, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my shape that I'm going to put behind my circle. So I'm going to click on the Bezier tool icon over here and somewhere around the middle of here I'm going to click and I'm just going to start making a shape. It really doesn't matter what kind of shape you make. I'm going to do something something kind of like this. I'm just going to be making the top half of this and uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this edit paths by nodes tool again and I'm going to kind of round out some of the these little fins on this little spiky thing I drew and uh, something a little bit like that and I'm going to leave this guy straight for now and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate it. I have it selected and I'm going to press Control D. That's going to do a duplicate of it. I'm going to flip that 180 degrees. I'm going to move that down here and align that with uh, where uh, the bottom of that top part is. And what I'm going to do now is hit Shift and select the other part of the shape here and I'm going to do a union on this so that it's just one big shape and one of the last things I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on edit pass by nodes again and I'm going to select this node right here at the far right of the, uh, the shape and what I want to do is round that out so I'm going to click on this make selected node smooth and that'll kind of round that out for me I'm going to make that just a little bit rounder here. I'm going to pull that out just a little bit so that it kind of contains the circle that's uh, going to be on top of it. Um, 
So now what I can do is I want to set that color of this entire shape to black. So I'm just going to click on the black color here. I'm going to press page down to move it behind that ball. And uh, I'm going to turn up the stroke by pressing shift and clicking on the X here. And I think what I want to do is I want to make this just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to uh, press control shift and click on this arrow here. Kind of grow that just a little bit. Yeah. Whoops. And I'm going to move that to line up right here. And I might make that just a little bit, a little bit narrower. There we go. So there we go. Now we got this going on here, and it's starting to look like a little bit of something, but not quite yet. Uh, <clears throat> The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this circle and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And I'm going to change, and I did that by pressing Control D. I'm going to change its color again just so I can tell the difference between the black behind it and the red ball. So I'm just going to change it to anything down here. And what I want to do is I'm going to try to cut out a circle uh, kind of to the left of the red circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press page down once to basically move that brown shape, that brown circle between the red circle and the black shape here. And I'm going to hit my left arrow key to kind of nudge it over a little bit. And uh, I think that looks good. So now I'm, I got that selected and I'm going to select this shape, uh, the black shape behind it. And I'm going to go do a path difference. And there I cut out a hole in there. And I, I think that looks all right. So I'm going to group these guys by pressing Control G, and I'm going to move this up right here. Um, actually, I'm going to undo that right now uh, because there's one more thing I want to do with this circle, and I want to do another duplicate of it. And this time, I want to make it black again, and I'm going to move it uh, behind the red circle by pressing uh, page down. And I want to, well, first I'm going to turn off the grid because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that black circle and make it just a little bit bigger, kind of like an outset. I'm going to use a dynamic offset here. And you can see that little node right here. I'm just going to click on that and pull it just a little bit. And you can see I pulled too much, so I'm just going to scale it back just a little bit until I like it. I think that's good. So we can be done there. I'm going to click on the mouse pointer tool and uh, go back and do an object to path on that. Now we kind of have something going on here. Um, I think the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to finish off that part of the logo there by uh, putting a letter there and uh, because I figure this will just be a uh, quote unquote bite wiser product, well it, it'll never be a product, I don't ever plan on selling any products, but um, I'm going to put a big B there using the uh, Brewmaster Modern font. Let me let me find that in here. There it is, Brewmaster Modern. And uh, that's going to need to get to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to press Control Shift and click on the diagonal arrow and make that bigger. And what I want to do now before I go any further is I want to do a object to path and you can see down at the bottom here it says group of one so we want to ungroup that and then we want to come up here and do a path union and that should take care of everything there now I want to center that B within that red circle so I'm going to do an object align and distribute and I want to center that B relative to the circle, which is the last item I selected here. So I'm going to center on the horizontal and vertical axes, axes, however you want to say that. And there I go. Um, I'm also going to do a duplicate of that B. And I'm going to change that to a white color. And I'm going to move that behind 
my B and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with that black circle behind the red circle. I'm going to do a, a dynamic offset here. I, I guess I better select the uh, white B and uh, I'm going to do a dynamic offset and you can see the node again. I'm going to pull that up just a little bit. That was a little bit too much. Scale that back just a little bit. There. And uh, wrap that up by doing a object to path. Now we're almost there. I want to add a little bit of glare to that ball, so I'm going to do that kind of generic, uh, you know, little white glare thing that everyone kind of does right now. So again, I'm going to want to kind of center this on the vertical axis. So I'm going to go over to Object and Align Distribute and uh, kind of center that up. Now, now what I want to do is I want to move this up just a little bit by pressing Alt and uh, using the up arrow. And uh, come to think of it, before I go any further, I'm going to do a path, object to path on it. And now I want to zoom in just a little bit because now that I did that object to path, I can move these nodes around and I want to move the node on the top of this ellipse that I just drew. And I want to move that up as close as I can to the top of that circle. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to change this white color because I want to see what's behind it, but just make it look kind of like there's a little bit of glare. So I'm going to do a linear gradient on that. And I want to edit this gradient here. I'm going to go in and we don't want full white um, on the one end and we don't want it completely transparent on the other. So on the end where it's completely uh, opaque right now with just full of white, I'm going to turn that alpha value down just a little bit there, about halfway or so, a little bit more than halfway. And then I'm going to go in and uh, on the transparent side, I'm going to bring up that alpha value just just a little bit here. And the last thing I'm going to do is use that Edit Paths by Nodes tool and kind of move that that linear gradient around here. Now, we want to zoom out. Kind of starting to have something that looks like something. Uh, I think the last thing we can start doing now is just adding the text to, text to this little logo I'm making here. And it's generic, I know that, but um, this is just to show you what you can do. So I'm going to type in ByteWiser, and uh, that's still using that white color, so I'm going to make that black for now. And what I want to do here is press Control shift and drag and make this just a little bit bigger. And I want to zoom in a little bit too. I didn't realize it was at 76%. Not that that matters, but I like being at 100%. So I got my uh, ByteWiser text right here. And first thing I'm going to do again is object to path. And so now basically we got a, a group of uh, 10 letters here. And we want to ungroup that by doing a Control shift g And I want to do a union on that. Now everything's together. I don't need to worry about, you know, losing letters if I move, uh, you know, uh, some of the text around. So uh, right now I'm going to do a uh, duplicate of this by doing Control D, and uh, I'm going to try to use that same red color there for this uh, byte wiser text. So I'm going to go in and do a linear gradient here. And I'm going to do a pull down and find my red color. There I go. So now what I want to do is I want to move that pinkish purplish part up to the top and move the reddish color down to the bottom, roughly. And before I stop there, I'm going to do an inset. No, that's too much. You can adjust that in settings, how, how much that inset uh, goes in, but um, I'm just going to do a dynamic offset of that red color, and I want to bring that in just a little bit, so I'm going to pull that in. Uh, apparently I'm pulling it in just a little bit 
too much. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That'll make things a little bit easier. Drag it out just a little. Okay. I think that'll be good. Yeah, that looks good. And so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to advertise what I'm going to be selling. And we'll just say uh, premium energy drinks. And uh, oh, I'm going to want to change the font of that. And I don't know if you noticed know before, but I've been messing around with the Orbitron font, which is uh, both the, the Brewmaster Modern and the Orbitron fonts appear to be free. So I'm going to change this to Orbitron font. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. And it looks like that fits pretty decently underneath ByteWiser. Again, I'm going to do an object to path. I'm going to do a shift control G to separate all those letters out so that I can perform a union on all of them. And there's, there's everything. I'm going to group this together so I can uh, center this in the, in the middle of the page. So I'm going to select page here, and there, move it right to the middle. And uh, same thing here for the, the rest of the logo. I'm going to move that into the center. And I think the last thing that we really need to do is to take this, all this stuff here and group it all together and center it right in the middle of the page. And, uh, and we're done. So there's our logo. Um, it's pretty quick, quick and simple to do something, you know, just kind of generic like this. But uh, uh, I hope this was helpful to to you guys. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, uh, just come on over to bitewiser.com, and I can uh, try to help you out. See ya.